Hi there. This is another episode of my favorite tools or jigs. Something that helps me out in the shop. Something I use a lot. And in this case, it's another Rockler product. I am not associated with Rockler. I just like some of their tools. This one they call the Magnet Micro Adjuster. And it's for precision adjusting the fence on your table saw. What you do is clip it onto the rail on your table saw after you've made a cut and it's just a little bit too wide, maybe you just want to take off a 64th of an inch, maybe even less. And then you just turn this handle to move the fence over, lock the fence down, do another cut. Works really well. It's got three magnets on the back so that you can clip it to the rail on your fence. Now, the bad news is Rocker no longer makes this. I have no idea why, it's very handy, I like it a lot, but that was their decision for whatever reason. The good news is, I'm going to show you today how to make one of your own. Now, to make it, I've got some parts here. This is for the handle. This is a blank for the body, about five by six inches. This is the threaded rod with a ball and socket joint and the wood on the end to hit your fence. And I've got three magnets and three cups for the magnets. I'm keeping them well apart because they can be hard to take apart sometimes. So with that, let's take a look at how to make one of your own. Another thing I should have mentioned, in case you haven't seen it, I have a video showing how to make the ball and socket joint so that you can make it for this project. If you haven't checked it out, I'll put a link in the description box down below the video and you can check this out too. This is the blank I'm using to make the body. This is the front face of the blank. I've made a mark three quarters of an inch from the front and three quarters of an inch from the top. First thing I'm going to do is drill a recess to fit the nut that will go on the threaded rod. So I'll just drill that deeply enough for that nut to set in there. That'll be perfect. I've changed the bit. I was using a 13 16 inch Forstner bit so that I'd have a flat bottom for the nut to sit in. Now I've changed it to a 7 16 inch brad point bit to drill the hole through. Now the rod will fit down in there. My next move, I guess, will be to shape the body. I intend to pretty much duplicate the shape. Not exactly, but close. I need to have this area open so the handle can come in as it does here. Instead of coming at this intersection, I'm going to leave it all the way out to here. So I'm drawing a line pretty much follow it. And I will take it on the bandsaw to cut that part out. When I drilled the 7 16 inch hole with the brad point bit, obviously I was a little off center. I've chiseled this out with a small chisel so it fits in there and I'm just going to fill this with epoxy to hold it in there anyway so it's not a big deal. I realize it doesn't look professional but I've never claimed to be a professional and this is in fact a homemade job so I think it'll work out just fine. For the recess for the second nut, I'm going to use a one inch Forstner bit. That should give me enough room around the nut to be able to get on there with either needle nose pliers 
or possibly even a socket, something to make sure I can tighten it properly. That's going to work just fine. I don't actually want that nut to be in there that tight. It's just like double nutting something and of course it won't turn. But I will put it in that tight while I put epoxy on the first side. And after the epoxy sets, I'll do the second side a little more loosely. I'm going to use a 1 8 inch router bit. I just want to round the edges over very slightly. Be sure the epoxy adheres to the metal of the nut. I'm just going to roughen it up using some 100 grit sandpaper. I'll do the second nut so it's ready to go when its turn comes. Now it's time to use the epoxy put that nut in. The instructions say to mix it for a full minute, so I will do that. There's a minute. What I do not want to do is have the epoxy go down in the 7 16 inch hole or between the threads of the rod and those of the nut. I've put epoxy in between the side of the nut and the wall of the recess, trying hard not to get it on the threads of the rod or that of the nut. Now I have to let it sit for 16 hours according to the instructions. All right, I confess, I did not wait for 16 hours. Matter of fact, I waited for about two hours, but I think it's set up enough that I can at least work on this side a little bit now. Try to get some epoxy down in here. And then I will wait 16 hours before I mess with it anymore. But at the moment, the two nuts are spaced well enough that this does swivel without being too tight.
Looks like I mixed up almost exactly the amount of epoxy I wanted. Now I will let that sit for 16 hours and then I'll be back. I need to cut a notch from the lower back side of the body. This will create a lip which will sit on the rail. Here's a little tip for you. If you decide to use one of these cups to put a magnet into, put a notch on the edge of it with a file. When you've got a notch there, if you decide for some reason you want to remove the magnet, you can pop it out with a small screwdriver. If you don't have a notch there, good luck. They're difficult, if not impossible, to get out. Now with that notch there, you'll be able to put a small screwdriver between the magnet that's in here and the wall of the wood that the cup is set into. Now I'm drilling the recesses for the three magnet cups. Now I'm going to put the cups in and I'm holding them down with number eight three quarter inch long screws. They're a Robertson head screw. A square socket. In the US they seem to like Phillips head screws but I don't care for them. The screwdrivers don't seem to stay in them nearly as well as they do in the Robertsons. In fact to be honest when I get a piece of equipment of some kind with Phillips head screws if I can I usually throw them away and replace them with some kind of Robertson screw. It's a Canadian thing. I'll put the magnets in. And if I want to remove them, using that little slot there, I can get a screwdriver underneath and pick them out quite easily. Now to use it, with the rod replaced in it, I simply put that against there. And if you watch the lines here, you'll be able to see it move across as I turn this. And you can turn very, very small or large amounts, whatever you want. So the only thing I have left to do now is to turn the handle for it. I want my handle to be four and a half inches long, which is the distance between these two lines. This is a half inch from this end. I want to drill into the handle two inches, so I have marked the length at two and a half inches. When this reaches here, I will be two inches into the handle. I'm using a 7 16 inch brad point bit to match the size of the rod.
I'm using two pair of pliers to hold the wire to make the burned marks. Never use bare hands to hold the wire. It can get hot and even worse if it gets caught somehow the injury could be catastrophic. Now I need to part it off and I'll need to be very careful because on this end you might remember there's a 7 16 inch hole there so it'll come off a lot quicker than what I might be prepared for. It just started to break through there and that's what made it grab and so it twisted off there. It's alright, I can cut this end off with a saw and this end I'll just sand. The handle is sanded to 280 grit. I think that's plenty sufficient for something that's going to be held in your hand. It's not an art piece, it's a jake. So now I need to put some epoxy in the hole, some on the threads push it home and let it sit there until tomorrow. Once that is set, I will likely coat the entire body, handle and the little swivel with mineral oil. And that's another project finished. Hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you'll want to make one for yourself one of these days. Not really all that difficult. Most time consuming part was the ball and socket joint. That took a little while. but. It was worth the time, it was fun to make, and uh, it's finished. Now one thing about it, the rod is not parallel with the base, and that's the reason for the ball and socket joint. It doesn't have to be perfect, things will work out in the end. So thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, have a great day in your shop, and be safe. Take care now.